Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Sorry if the lighting looks so harsh. It is gloomy as hell and I've had to resort to artificial lighting, but I hope it's not terribly different. You're probably wondering, why are you wearing a bun even though you kind of can't see it? Well, I'm doing another makeup video, which was not evident by the fact that I still have glasses on because I don't feel like wearing contacts. But I am doing makeup and I am doing some Bridgerton makeup, but I want to make it dark. I want it to look like I just lost my husband and I'm going through a grieving period, okay? So that is why I have my hair up. This is as high as I could get the bun to go and I really can't do more <laughs> with my hair. I'm so bad at doing hair. So forgive me if like a bun is all I could manage or this look. I hate it too. But without further ado, let's get into some Bridgerton inspired makeup because I have season three brain rot and that's all I can think about. So for my makeup inspiration, I'm going for a Penelope's look in season three where it's this very light, um, delicate sort of makeup and I'm going to try to be making it dark. <laughs> Might be a bit of a challenge. Starting off with foundation. I'm so out of this. Uh, I'm trying to get, I'm gonna squeeze every last bit I can get. I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish the sort of dewy skin look she has. I'm very much a matte, bold type girly, but I'm gonna try my hardest. And before anyone comes for me and is like, oh, your makeup's not Regency specific or your hair isn't or your outfit isn't, neither is Bridgerton. <laughs> If you know anything about Bridgerton, it's very loosely based off of the Regency era. It's set in that era, but the clothes and the makeup do not define it. I would have killed to do Penelope's hair from season three, but I just, no, there's no way. This lighting makes me look like a ghost. But yeah, I am terrible at hair. I suck at it. I don't even know how to braid hair. I literally just pulled out my donut hair bun thing from like fucking what 2014 and went to town okay i have a nice base going let's go in with eye primer even though we're not doing anything spectacular to the lid i don't want any of the eyeshadow or anything to like crease her makeup is very like pink she has like pink blush pink eyeshadow pink lips i think what i'm gonna do is do like gray eyeshadow maybe gray lips if i can pull it off and some like blush so let's see what i can do because i'm trying to keep this light okay i definitely need more <laughs> It's quite challenging to do actually for me. I really wish I had like some Sea Beauty makeup because I've been really interested in the whole like dewy sheer look that uh, Sea Beauty makeup has to it. And I think as I've gotten older, I feel like I've strayed more and more away from any sort of like bold, crazy looks. Even though I still do them on like the channel and stuff, obviously. But in my everyday life, not something I gravitate towards. Honestly, most days I don't even wear makeup. And then I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker gray on the like outer corners because I highly doubt she's only wearing one eyeshadow. It's like we have to have some definition, you know? It's a lot more harsher on camera, but I can assure you in person it's not that harsh. And then I think she also has some eyeshadow on the lower lash. And also for anyone asking um, why I've been doing my makeup with my fingers lately, um, I just feel like I've been getting a lot better control over the product than I have with like a brush. And there we have it on the lower lash line. Like I said, subtlety is key here. I'm gonna do my mascara before I forget again like I did last video. She very much has like false lashes on, but I don't have any, so I'm going to try to make my lashes as like voluminous as humanly possible. I think I might do that two coat method from back in high school. <laughs> Y'all remember that? When people were like obsessed with like spider lashes. While I painstakingly comb my eyelashes, let's talk about Bridgerton, oh my god. I binged it the day after it came out, because it came out at like 2 a.m. my time, so I ended up binging it the next night. I actually made my boyfriend watch it with me. Well, I shouldn't say make. I convinced him to watch the first season, and then we ended up binging the first and second season in preparation for the third season. And man, was it good. Ugh. And the thing is, it's it's just the first part. It's just the first four episodes. We haven't even got the last four episodes yet. Like, here's what the eyelashes look like. I think they look pretty good. Now let's do my eyebrows. I'm keeping them pretty much my shape and just filling them in. I'll try to keep it like spoiler free for the most part. Things I did enjoy where it was, I didn't think we were going to get Lord Develing as early as we did. We got him in the first episode, which I was really surprised about, which if you don't know anything, Lord Develing is supposed to be um, sort of the love interest for Penelope and sort of a love triangle between Penelope and Colin. He was great. I did not expect the character development that we got from Crescent in this season. I like her a lot now. Eloise was Eloise. It's funny because my boyfriend actually really does not like Eloise. Eloise used to be like my favorite character in the entire show in the first season. She's everything I hate about that sort of time period, that era, you know, where like women really wanted to like be independent, 
do their own things, go to school, like have a job and they just fucking couldn't. They were expected to sit home and have babies. And if you didn't do that, you were gonna grow old and alone. I'm like, no. So I really liked her character in the first season because she was so outspoken about like her hatred for the way society works. As she's just gone on, she gets a little bit more inseparable. Like she befriends Cressida this year and sort of gets mixed into talking to the girls of the dawn and everything, especially the new ones. And like, she just can't have a good time. Like she has to find something wrong with everything and it really pisses me off. I really hope she chills out when it's her season or even next season when it's Benedict season because I am tired of it. Like this isn't even a spoiler but there was a one one episode there seeing a viewing of like a library and Eloise makes some snide comment about like who wants to have a library and it's like bitch don't you talk so heavily about how much you like reading? I don't like I don't get it. Eyebrows are on. Yeah, Colin was insane this season in the first episode when he comes back. He's got like a newfound swagger and a new look and everything and he's just buttering up the women. I'm just like, please just gouge my eardrums out. I don't want to hear any more of this. I'm like, you sound like a major fucking cheese ball. Like, I can't do this. On to the blush. Here we gonna look to see how they did the blush. I'm back. Anyway, back to Bridgerton. I absolutely loved um, Penelope's family this season. They were a hoot. I, I love them so much. Insert himself. Insert himself where? <laughs> oh god, I love this fucking show. Okay, now on to the lipstick, but I kind of have no fucking idea what I'm doing. So I think I'm gonna take this red lipstick and sort of just lightly dot it to sort of get, give a tint. Because I don't think black or gray would look good. I think I just look dead and that's not what I'm technically going for. I'm just going for dark. And then since I feel like it filled in every single crack on my lip, I'm gonna go in with some, like some chapstick. Make it look moist. I hate that word. <laughs> now I think I'm going to setting spray my face. Make it look moist. I need to stop saying that word. To make it look dewy. That's a better word. I haven't done setting spray in forever. I hated that. And that is the look. Like I said, super subtle, but nice. So I'm going with a haphazard outfit because I don't have a dress. I'm not that cool. So we're going with a skirt that I'm going to put like up here <laughs> and I'm going to tuck in this shirt. It has ruffly sleeves and it has pretty like lace detail sleeve. Okay and here's the outfit. But we got the top like, detail on it and the sleeves and then I have this really nice choker that I paired with it. And then we have the skirt which is right to here but you really can't tell that it's not a dress because they're both velvet fabrics. So they blend in quite nice with each other, but yeah. I know it's not giving Regency, but it's giving more like romantic goth or like sexy librarian. Do you think I look like I'm mourning my dead husband who died under mysterious circumstances? <laughs> and that is all I have for this video. I apologize for the weird lighting. I, the sun was around. <laughs> when I wanted to film. Let me know what you guys think about my outfit down below, my makeup and all that. Let me know if you like Bridgerton, if you guys watch it. And if you haven't, would you? People say it's like 1800s Gossip Girl, <laughs> which I've, all, I've never seen Gossip Girl, but I, I see it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go take some pictures for my Instagram because I can't let this outfit go to waste, obviously. But if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I post new videos out every week, so don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss another upload from me. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!